I need to make like a cheesy song. I'm sure there's a cheesy song out there somewhere. I'm going to try to find it where it's like, you need friends. <laughs> friends, isn't there Saint by the Bell? Is it friends till the end? I have to find that. <laughs> So in last week's video, I talked about the release of my book, Grief Sucks But Your Life Doesn't Have To, and I thought that since it is the release month of the book, I'd start going through explaining the trust system that is the basis for the book. So in last week's video, I talked about the T in trust, which is tell your truth. So if you missed that video, I will link it, not there, there. <laughs> I do that every single time. I'll put it up there so you can go ahead and watch that one first if you haven't seen that one yet, or you can watch it when you're done with this one because it really doesn't matter what order you go in. This week, I wanna talk about the R in the trust system, and the R stands for reach out. So it's all about reaching out which I know is really, really difficult for people in grief. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to make that easier and what steps you can take. Stay tuned. When you're in deep grief, a lot of times you feel like you are stranded on this isolated, deserted island. And sometimes you want to be stranded on that island by yourself. But it is so important to reach out to other people. We have all been there where at some point a person who we thought was going to be our rock turns into like a pile of sand and is not really any support for us. It is the reality of grief, unfortunately. Not everyone is going to be able to support you in the way that you need. So what I try to teach you in the book is how to figure out the ways that different people in your life can serve you during your grief. Because you won't just go to one person for everything that you need. There are people out there who can help you with maybe more practical things like helping with groceries or watching other children if you have them or you know, running errands, mowing the lawn, bringing you meals, things like that. And then there are the people who you can go to if you need to have those deep, difficult conversations, the people who are totally fine sitting there listening to you, you know, cry your eyes out and bury your heart and soul. Not everyone is made for that. So you really need to take some time to figure out who can do what for you on your grief journey. And on the opposite side, from the people who might let you down, who can't be what you expect them to be, you will have people pop up most likely who are more than you thought they were going to be. So maybe there's a coworker that you really didn't interact that much with, but while you are in your grief, that person is insanely supportive and is a great help to you. So I discovered that there were people that I wasn't super close with that I ended up becoming really close with because I am on this grief journey. There are other people that I would have expected them to be someone that I could vent to about how I'm feeling, and they just weren't comfortable with that. And you know what? That is okay. We have to let people off the hook. And that's another one of the things that I discuss is that some people are just built for helping us in certain ways, but not others. So that's why we really need to take a clear look at who can do what. And we have to get over that fear of reaching out. And we really need to get more comfortable with asking people what they are comfortable with in helping us with our own journey. So I actually really advocate in the book for you just coming out and asking people like, hey, do you mind being my like ride or die vent person? <laughs> Do you mind being my walking buddy that will just walk with me and maybe not talk about my grief? Could you be the fun person that I go out and do fun stuff with and we don't talk about my grief at all? There are different roles for different people and it is perfectly okay. Actually, it's more than okay. It is actually preferable to just let that person know what you would like from them. And then don't be upset if they say, I really don't have the energy to do that. You can let people off the hook. Or if you're getting a sense like you're being a pain in the butt, 
back off and maybe look for someone else. Eventually, you'll end up with a kind of core group of people that you can go to for different things. One of the other big things I talk about in this chapter is something that I call, I, I made up my own term, I call it the great migration. This is when all the casseroles are gone in your freezer and everybody just seems to like slide away. <laughs> but inevitably that is probably going to happen. And when that does happen, it's even more important to kind of establish that core group that's still going to be around for you. If you're struggling to find those people, then look, if it's been a while since you're lost, then I would recommend either looking for a therapist, looking for a grief coach or a counselor or finding a group near you. If there's a grief group, you can find one in person, you can find one online. But typically those sort of situations, while I say in the first couple months, like the early days and months of loss, I recommend for people to kind of stay away from grief groups at first because they can be kind of overwhelming. But after a while, sometimes people who are in grief groups, they understand what you're going through and they don't mind sitting and listening to your problems because it's just sort of accepted that then you will sit and listen to their problems as well. Grief groups, people are kind of there for each other because they know what the other people are going through. So that could be an option if that migration happens. But for most people, a lot of times it will be enough to just have a small group of people that you can depend on to help you out for the different things that you need. I say it all the time. I, you're probably annoyed with me saying it, but I am extremely introverted. I am awkward in person and I do not make friends easily. <laughs> I tell people when I'm doing interviews about the book, this was the hardest section for me to write because it is not natural for me to reach out for people. It's not natural for me to ask for help. And so many people are like that, I think, where we feel uncomfortable asking for what we need. We feel uncomfortable asking people for their support and their assistance. And grief is one of those times where we just need to get over ourselves and we just need to figure out how to do it because we really should not do grief alone. And coming from someone who would much prefer to be alone on a normal basis, it can be really, really hard to do, but I cannot stress how important it is. So the hardest part for me writing this book as an introvert and as someone who it's not natural for me to reach out and for me to want to spend time with other people was actually walking the walk and not just talking the talk. So I had to learn myself what I am teaching you guys to reach out and text somebody every now and then. If I have days where I'm not doing anything but coming home and watching TV or you know just kind of shutting myself away and feeling that overwhelm of grief, I have to make an effort to text a friend and say, hey, do you want to go get a cup of coffee? Or hey, can we plan to get together and do something? I have like the same four friends since high school. So I am definitely not the best in the uh, social department. So many people seem to think that reaching out for support means that you're weak and you can't do things on your own. And it is the exact opposite of that. Reaching out for support when you're grieving takes strength. It takes so much strength. It takes so much energy just to pick up the damn phone and to text somebody when we are in deep grief. And I get it. And I am sending you the strength that you need to reach out to other people and form that support system and try to find those people to support you when you are in grief. Keep smiling. Keep shining, no, you can always count on me, for sure, that's what friends are for. Uh, I'm a little tired. <laughs> Let me know in the comments whether you are someone who can easily reach out to others or if it's more difficult for you. 
so much of this is just seeing other people going through what we are going through. And for some people, this section is really easy. You have a lot of friends. You already have a great support system. But a lot of people in grief really, really struggle with finding a good support system. So if that is you, if you have any suggestions, if you have any questions, please leave them below. I try to answer every single comment and we can help each other out as well. If you want resources for reaching out and different groups that you could join, I do have those on my website, brookcarlock.org. And like I said, this was a whole chapter of my book that goes into way more detail and actually gives you kind of step-by-step -step instructions. And it's just a quick review. The R in the trust system, T-R-U-S-T, -T, is for reach out. So now we've gone through T, tell your truths, and R, reach out. And in next week's video, we will be talking about you which is all about unpacking those emotions of grief. Hopefully that was helpful. I will catch you guys next week. Sending love and hugs as always. Bye.